Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Delaney. I'm Chip. And today we're going to be doing our second drugstore bingo. And today the wheel decided that we would be doing Wet and Wild. We're so <laughs> excited to be jumping into these products today. I went and yes. bought a crap ton of stuff because yes. it is so affordable and cheap and I love it. Yeah, I've never tried Wet and Wild before, so. So we're just gonna be going through the products as we use them. I picked up a foundation, Chip picked up a foundation, some powders, some liquid cat suits and the eyeshadows and lips, yes. some mascaras. We already did our brows off camera because those are not going to be wet and wild products for today. <laughs> we're ready to go. Let's go. All right, we're starting with priming our face using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Cucumber 3-in-1 Primer Water. It's a prep, a set, and a refresh, cruelty-free. Let's go. All right, it's a lot. A lot comes out, so don't inhale. This didn't feel like doing primer today. <laughs> it does smell amazing. I feel like I'm in a spa. Yes. Watch Chip's fanning her face. I'm going to be jumping in with the stick foundation that I picked up, which is the Photo Focus line. But this is second in the tight. shade Shell Ivory, which I think is like the second to lightest option. Uh, I wouldn't say it's more of a matte. I would say it's more of a natural finish. It will dry down <laughs> a lot. Uh, we won't say about how we already filmed this video and then we had to take it all <laughs> off because it was not recording. So You know when those YouTubers are like, this is the third time I filmed this video. Now we can relate. <laughs> Oh. All right, I'm just prepping my eyes with the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer and Original. Chip likes to do eyes first. I like I to do, do face first. I was contemplating doing my face first and I was like, why? So in first trial run with this foundation, I realized that it does dry down pretty fast. I could probably use a brush instead of a <laughs> Morphe blending sponge to put it in, but it did apply nicely. So I'm just going to be following that same suit again. And I'm just going to be working more on like portions of my face instead of trying to apply all the product to the whole face and then go back and blend in. So I'm going in with the Mega Last. This is your liquid eyeshadow and this is in the shade Goldilux. So it's a very nice gold metallic shade and I'm just going to create like a half cut crease type of look with this. Now these do dry down very quickly, so if you're wanting to blend them out so it's not such a harsh line, do it while they're still wet. Okay, the pigmentation on these liquid eyeshadows definitely reminded me of Fila, but Glitter and Glows, definitely having that same kind of payoff. It's been a minute since I've had like a stick foundation, so I'm not used to like how dry in comparison to a liquid foundation it is. So I'm just trying to work relatively quickly. It is a nice creamy feel. It doesn't feel like I have anything on, to be honest. It is not the most full coverage unless you just keep applying. So I'm just blending it out in areas and going back to anything that I need to like spot correct. I didn't pick up a primer, but I did use the Glam Glow Volcasmic Matte Moisturizer, which is my go-to for primers right now. I wouldn't say for this foundation that it covers like my more textured areas. It definitely accentuates them. And that's just how it is when you have like a cream foundation in general. Uh, it's not going to make like a flawless finish in a sense of covering your textured areas. So if you have like raised areas or bumps or anything like that, it's definitely going to accentuate that. So I'm gonna get that back, y'all. Make sure I ain't playing no games. I'm gonna go in with the next shade, which is Ruby Heist, and it is a nice red, placing it right beside that gold. And also remember, you just have to blend this out while it's still wet or wherever you placed it is where it's staying. And you do not need a lot of those. Yeah, little goes a long way with this product. This red is so vibrant. Like this would look gorgeous just on its own all over the lid. So thoughts on the foundation, I'm not hating it. I definitely think that for the price, the coverage is great. And if you didn't know, all Wet n' Wild's products are all cruelty free, which is not mm. a lot that some drugstore brands can say. Yeah. So I think that's really cool and definitely a benefit to them. I'm just gonna line, make a nice little wing with my Kat Von D Trooper liner. I picked up this dual ended contour stick. It has one side, which is a nice like brown. It looks a little warm for me, but we'll see how it blends out. And then the other side is like more of a lip stick shape concealer. So that'll be great for applying under the eye versus the contour shade that's gonna go into like your larger open area. So it doesn't have to be a specific shape. So it's just rounded at the end. And I'm just gonna go in with the concealer first under the eye, 
forehead, nose, chin, all the areas that I want to highlight. But it is a cream base just like the foundation. So that will blend in nicely with each other once I get to blending. Taking my laterality. Just gonna go in with that contour shade. I'm gonna go very lightly because it is a little dark. So I'm trying out, this is the Mega Protein Mascara. Just wanna try it out and see if I love it because I need a new everyday mascara. So far it is nice and light on my lashes. It looks like it's separating my lashes and we will see how it lasts with multiple layers because I like to do like three or four layers on my mascara. I like to use two different mascaras when I'm going for just a natural lash. Mm -hmm. So I'll use like a thicker one like the Butter London and then I'll use like Urban Decay's Perversion or like Tarte. Tartise lash paint to kind of break through versus like doing multiple, multiple coats, but that's just a preference. So far so good. My lashes feel very lightweight, which is always a plus. And we're gonna go with face. My face feels a little bit tacky, like it's just a tad, which is pretty good. So the little primer spray is doing something. It's not just like spraying water on my face. <laughs> All right, let's go in with the foundation. I am in the shade Chestnut, which is the deepest shade that we could find. So I'm not mad at the way that the contour shape blended out. Do I really see it as much as I would see like my go-to Fenty matchstick in amber? No. However, I'm still not mad at the application. I definitely see a change in the shade right there. So I kind of over applied the foundation on my face. I like a full coverage, so I just applied more than I usually would if it was a liquid. The only like normal powder product I didn't pick up from Wet n Wild was a setting powder because all they had was like a pressed powder and I like to have like a loose one so I'm just jumping in with Too Faced real quick to just kind of set the under eye because with a stick foundation it's gonna be a little bit more greasy, not as like wet obviously, but I still want it to be set even though I'm not gonna be using like a powder eyeshadow today. I still want to make sure that my face still feels like it normally does, which is dry as fuck. <laughs> so next powder product that I normally pick up to do my face is my powder contour. Now I did pick up a powder bronzer because they didn't really have contour shades that I liked or like a face powder that I could use as a contour dupe. So I picked up the Sunset Strip Tease, which is a really big pan. Obviously it's not super deep, but still a huge pan, which I would prefer for a bronzer because you're normally putting a bigger brush into a bronzer pan. It has like this nice little leaf pressed into it. And you know, we're gonna see what it'd be like using my Morphe M436 to apply. Use it for all my contour shades. And I'm just gonna be lightly putting that on because again, it's very warm in comparison to the face shade that I have on right now. So after vigorous blending, definitely, I think it adds to my dewiness from the spray, but we'll let, we'll let the foundation kind of soak in. Going in with the concealer, so this is in the shade medium slash deep tan, and I'm going to apply this under my eye to highlight. It feels like a matte formula when you put it on your skin, but it dries so fast. So apply one side, blend it out, and then move on. What I'm noticing a trend in most of their products, whether it's the Fona Finish, or if it's like the Mega Glow, or the Cat Suits, they all typically dry pretty fast. Yes. So you want to make sure that whatever product you're applying, you're working on that particular area or section of your face and then moving on to the next one. Yeah. But I'm not but... mad about this bronzer right now. I think I applied it a lot better the second time around. <laughs> I think this is a good bronzer for summer coming up because as I inevitably see more sunlight, yeah. I will have to probably change my foundations a little bit. Not a whole lot because I'm not gonna be living outside, but you know. But this concealer really honestly, it blends out like a dream. It really kind of evens out my under eye. My dark circles are gone. My little tiny wrinkles have kind of melted in. So everything is looking nice and flawless under the eye right now. I did pick up another product from the Color Icon um, along with the bronzer, which is the Blush in Fantastic Plastic Pink. Say that five times fast. <laughs> it did come with a tiny little brush inside, but it is pretty like flat. So I'm not trying to like apply my blush like that. This pink is more like a nice little Barbie Malibu USA pink. It does have some glitter reflex in it, which looks to be like kind of silvery or like a lilac. It's 
you know, still very natural. You don't really notice the shimmer a whole lot when you apply from my first go around, but we're gonna try to see if I can get that to come out a little bit more this time. I'm just gonna go in with my normal blush brush, the Bare Minerals fan brush that you can't buy anywhere. I'm definitely seeing the sparkles a lot more now that I'm like actually looking for them versus like my first time I didn't see them a lot, but it is a very pretty pink. It's very like sun-kissed summer. So, you know, if you need a summer blush, that's, that's the one. Okay, I'm just setting all of this with my Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder in Medium Deep. Oh, the concealer is working really nice with the powder, so that's a plus. So I also picked up a product from the Mega Glow line, which is the Hello Halo. It's a liquid highlighter. Now, normally you would think a liquid highlighter like this is going to come with a drop applicator. No, <laughs> this one comes with a doe foot applicator, actually. Kind of like Tarte. It's very thick. Yeah. I'm gonna use a brush to apply this. I am not, yeah. not. I wanted to get more of a rosy gold shade in comparison to like the other shades that they had, just because I don't necessarily have that in my collection. But it's still like a very, very light. Like any skin tone could wear this, except if you were like maybe very deep, 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 like no reds, it would not probably look very great. But I'm really liking the way that this liquid highlight is blending into the blush. They're very complimentary. So if you want to get that blush, get this highlight. You know, you gucci. Do I think that I'll hit pan on or? bottom of the bottle with this liquid highlight probably not probably but it is very nice to apply underneath everything else all right i'm just going in with my morphe um this is my finishing powder in the number 13 all over the face with my morphe e41 <laughs> brush all right so we're gonna try this lipstick in um their liquid catsuit high shine lipstick uh-oh well, Chip's struggling over there. Oh. I'm gonna be dipping in another product from the Megalo line, the Illuminating Palette, and this is Catwalk Pink, but I don't know what the purpose was necessarily to name it because it's the only one that you could get. But it has four shades in it. Um, there's kind of like a champagne on this right side here. Then it goes into like a baby icy pink, then a more like rosy gold pink that would match more so with that highlighter. And then it goes into like this actual bronzy shade. I wouldn't necessarily call it a gold because it's definitely more bronzy orange, but that would look pretty if you have like more of a medium skin tone. I'm going to be sticking on the right side shades. So these two right here, I'm just going to be mix them together with my Morphe M510. How are you feeling over there? Pigmentation wise, two coats, two or three coats to get like a lipstick pigmentation. The first application definitely was like a lip gloss. It was very sheer, which I don't like, but after three coats, I see like a lipstick coat. It's not sticky, but your hair will definitely get stuck in this if it gets gets in the way. But it's not leaving like those weird like <laughs> like lines when you close your lips. Oh, so like your, for your lip texture. So as far as my lip coloration wise, very even. I don't see my natural lip color trying to peek through. Okay, they're they're not awful, but they're not great. You, you feel know? like you're wearing 18 layers because you, you yeah. <laughs> Four like layers <laughs> later. Everyone loves the liquid cat suits, and I think that's very specific on which liquid cat suit you like. Because <laughs> you know they have the eyeshadows now, they have the matte formula, they have the wetness over there that you're dealing with. <laughs> that I'm dealing with. Yeah, the high shines. So I picked up three of the liquid eyeshadow cat suit. So you can tell from the color of the lid, this is a matte one. It's like a cool taupe, which would be really beautiful for like cut creases or if you want to apply it to just your eye for the day. So it definitely be something that I would probably pick up once I apply and see how I like it. It is in the shade off the grind. And then the other two, the white lids are metallic shades actually. So we have a fairy tale ending, which is this like nice cool tone, pinky, metallic -y look, obviously. And then we have When the Stars Align, which is like a duochrome, like purple base with like a gold shift. And it's just so beautiful. I want to eventually play with this one by itself and do an all over lid look with this or like a really bold liner. But today I'm just going to be using this to deepen up my outer corner. And then for this, it's going to go on lid and then off the grind is going to go in my crease because I like a matte crease. What? Look at that natural, like, Ooh, oh, girl. goodness. She's using that mega illuminating. Gonna do some swatches right here for you guys. Now, with these, like Chip said, you don't need a lot. <laughs> okay, so this catwalk highlighting, it just brings out that natural glow. Like, it's not like, oh, you have highlight on. It's like, oh, you healthy. You healthy. <laughs> you drinking your greens. <laughs> 
That's what that is. Where's my green smoothie chip? I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Next filming Sunday. Okay, nice. so this top one was the highlighter shade, so don't look at that one right now. The bottom three, this is off the grind. You can kind of pick that up, so it's very cool taupe. The fairy tale ending, which is that nice pink reflect shimmer. And then the when the stars align at the bottom, which is the most bold tone, which is why I'm not putting that all over my eye today. <laughs> I'm gonna use off the grind and fairy tale ending with the applicator, and then I'm gonna be going in with a brush, Morphe the E18, and I'm just gonna be very lightly sticking that onto the applicator and then applying. So I'm gonna take when the stars align, God, that brush. Do, 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 do. Just very, very lightly apply and blend. Yes. Okay. So I am loving this shade. It is. She's in that more bronzy shade that I talked about. How do you guys feel about when brands do that? They do split pans, but like there's no clear divider. I like to have a divider. Yeah. But also, I don't know how I feel about them. Not to shit on like Wet n Wild, cause I get it. Like I don't want to have 18 pieces of packaging, but that's just my, my thoughts. Thoughts on it. Thoughts, thoughts. I don't know. Like I like singles. I like singles. Like if I wanted to get a pink or a very light, light baby pink or a white, then I would get them singles. Like this would be perfect if the whole pan was one shade. Because then you really like invested in that color, but I would then hit pan on the bronze shade and then I would just have four different mm -hmm. highlighters I wasn't using, so. Same kind of idea with like blush trios. Yeah. When it's the only one of brand releases. Yeah, and there's like <laughs> You got your deepest shade, shade like... you've got your medium shade and your light shade, <laughs> like no person <laughs> is going to use all three of those at the same time yeah now again obviously you're not going to use a whole blush trio all at the same time but if i wanted to get a really nice beautiful deep berry if i went to like abh for example anastasia mm -hmm. one of her blush trios i would not be able to use the other two shades yeah. like they would be too red or too bronzy that it would make sense on my skin even if I could use like a very light application of the berry tone in there. So I want to see brands move away from that. Stop putting shit in pans that don't make sense in a collection release. Just leave it alone. Yeah, just do a single. All right, and so this does say to set, angle ourselves away from Delaney. And I'm so spray. wet over here. <laughs> don't. I would say that when I'm like mm. applying this with a brush that it is really diffusing like the gold in there. I'm just more so using it to like deepen the eye. All right, I'm adding more of that mascara to my bottom lashes because I almost forgot about them. I feel like fairy tale is like super pigmented on the hand, but it's not so pigmented on the eye, which makes me kind of sad. <laughs> like you could definitely see the glitterish there, but I feel like I'd have to put a lot of layers on here mm -hmm. to really get like the full pigmentation that I'm wanting. The lip makes me want to say lip gloss. Um, the more it's sitting <laughs> on my lips, it's kind of like evening out, which is like weird, but. Maybe guess, as you're moving the product around, it's taking away some of that shine. Yeah, yeah. I'm liking it. The more it's sitting, it's still sticky, so. Not a product yeah. to eat a uh, sandwich with. I didn't pick up an eyeliner because I just wanted it to be all about the eyeshadow look today. Mm -hmm. But I did pick up a mascara. It's called the Lash Omatic. It's a mascara and fiber extension mm. kit. What I did realize when I was first doing it in the prior video <laughs> is that I definitely need to apply one side at a time, do the mascara, the fiber, the mascara, because I cannot get the fibers to really adhere. The fibers are in white, just as the packaging on the outside are. So if you prefer a fiber that is the same color as your mascara, so black or brown, you don't want this. You apply the mascara first, then the fiber, then the mascara back. I did not hate the mascara. It does say steps one and three on there. So if you forget or if you lose the box, it does tell you. And then this says step two, obviously. All right, we're gonna go into the mascara part first. Now this one has a like tapered spoolie on the inside. It's kind of like, you know, an hourglass shape in a sense, which I don't necessarily care for. I like one that's straight across, mm. but we gonna apply and see what it like. I'm resisting the urge to add more highlight because I, I know I have enough. The limit does not exist. <laughs> In comparison to like some of the other like gel mascaras that I've had that come with like an extension kit or fiber lash with it, 
this is probably like the driest formula that I've had, not in like a bad way, but I just expect it to be more gel or more liquidy. Mm -hmm. So the fibers can adhere better and mix in, but oh, the sound. Yeah. I'm just gonna blow off the excess. But as long as I'm applying these fibers, like as soon as the mascara is wet, I think I'll have a better turnout than prior when I was just doing them drier. Okay, so I wanted to swatch the lipstick options that I did pick up. So here they are. The pink shade is called Bury Me Down, and this is also a high shine lipstick. And then that deeper berry, which is what I'm wearing right now, this is Late Night, also a high shine lipstick. And then the red tone here, this is Missy and Fierce, and this is their liquid matte formula. So this dries down pretty matte. Um, I did try the red, and I'm not a fan of it. It, it dries down matte, it does, but it's not as pigmented on my lips as I thought it should be. If you could rate your MAC li MAC li <laughs> your matte lipstick formula preference, what would be your bottom and what would be your top? Bottom would probably be, sorry to say, but ABH. Um, I haven't had the best of long wear with my matte lipsticks from them. They crack really easily and kind of like peel off in chunks. So I'm just, yeah, it's a no. What's your top? Uh, Too Faced. Too Faced melted matte lipsticks. You guys, they've never, they've never done me wrong. Ever. Love them. I have the whole line just because I, I just love them. Now their lip gloss is crap. That latex, crap. Like they were giving well, we know them you out. don't like a high shine lip. Yeah, they were giving out of samples at Ulta one day. And I was like, ooh, maybe I'll get like a mini melted matte. No, they were giving out the latex minis. And I was like, can I give a bag? So I would say on the mascara, you can definitely tell that I put mascara on. <laughs> would I say that the fibers were the best? No, um, I'm used to fibers. Oh, God, I opened it again. The sound is just gross because it's scraping the inside. But I would say that the fibers are more like clumpy and short versus I'm used to like more of a long mm. piece of fiber. You know, like when you get that glitter that has like the little strings in it instead mm. of like dots. That's mm. what this feels like as a comparison. A weird comparison at that, but a comparison. And I feel that it was just hard to kind of like rake it through and get a straight-ish shape versus like just clumps. But the mascara pore port port what? like well, uh, I can now <laughs> the mascara part is nice I, I felt like it was more lengthening than necessarily like voluminous which um so I got two of the liquid cat suits I stuck with matte because I like a matte I don't like high shine whatsoever <laughs> um I got more of like a pinky tone so in case I was feeling more pink with this blush um that is the shade pink really hard and then I got more of a neutral tone so if I wanted to match my eyeshadow more than like my blush look I got Toffee Talk first video I made the mistake of trying to make an ombre <laughs> with these and it just did not work. Didn't work too drying um can't really blend them out unless they're both wet at the same time which is hard to do uh for any you know mm -hmm. person so I'm gonna stick with more of the pinky tone and get that on there I didn't have to pink really hard but we're just gonna apply this really quick now it's a doe foot applicator it is a little curved so I do like that I don't like a super flat one but I normally scrape off the excess product when I'm applying a matte but with these I feel that I need to leave that excess product on there so I can actually blend it out we gonna get on there real quick the lips done <laughs> it's not completely dry down yet but I know it will dry in like before I even finish the sentence but I like the formula. Now, do I think it has as much coverage as I would prefer for a matte formula? No. I could keep layering up. It doesn't bother me too much to have a thick layer of matte on me, but after a while, obviously, like anyone that's gonna get uncomfortable. But I don't mind them. I would definitely go pick up some more of these. I love the neutral shade that I picked up as well. Uh, it's a little bit darker, like once you actually apply it and it dries down versus, um, the pink, I feel like the pink didn't really change a whole lot of color. It's still very much the same color. It's in the bottle. So let's talk positives and negatives. Okay. So positives, I did like the way that everything dried down. Yes, it is 
a fast, like a more speedy application, but I like that once it's dry, you can move on. You're not like waiting for it to dry and then do another step. Like it's really quick. Mm -hmm. So um, positives, concealer. This was a great, great product. Um, I wish that the, the shade was darker, but that's just, there's nothing else available. But for what I did pick up and my skin tone, I think it did a really good job. It really did cover up my dark circles and my fine lines. So that's a plus and it felt really good after applying and it worked really well with my Laura Mercier. So that's a plus. Mascara. This is the protein mascara. Um, I'm just looking for another everyday low end type of priced mascara and this did really good. It's really lightweight. Um, it really separated my lashes. It didn't give me like the vavoom type of lashes, but it did its job. And the color black, which is super nice. This one is a mega protein, so they do mm -hmm. have a few options. This one is more to help like boost your lashes. So. Her lashes are going to punch me out next time I'm probably over here if she keeps using it. <laughs> but yeah, I liked it. And it was really easy to apply, glided on pretty smooth. And I did a couple coats after each um, coat dried and it stuck. So that's good. No flakiness, which is a plus. My next positives would be the liquid eyeshadows. They applied really beautifully. I love the color pigmentation. Again, these do remind me of Stila, just a fraction of the price. And they're not big chunks of glitter like the Stila ones can be. So yeah, that was a positive. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> um, positives for me. I feel like almost everything I really liked. Um, my favorites were probably the liquid eyeshadows. I've been seeing them for a while, so I was really excited to try them. I was like, oh my god, I'm so excited, so excited, so excited. <laughs> and I'm glad that I wasn't so disappointed, so disappointed, so disappointed. <laughs> um, like we've talked about, you know, you definitely want to apply then blend right away if you're going to be doing that. But honestly, I'm going to use this taupey shade to cut out my crease anytime I need it. Because yeah. it's going to be a great base. Would I say that you should probably put a dry eyeshadow on top you better work very quickly if you're going to do that because it's not going to stick to anything because it's very meant to just dry down and yeah not be blended in with powders or anything like that second favorite i would probably say is the lip i like a good matte lip and i wouldn't necessarily wear this pink shade as often because i'm not really wearing a whole lot of pinks right now just because my hair is purple and green but i do really like the neutral that i picked up and i'm glad that i did pick that <laughs> one up because i like a neutral lip when i'm wearing a bold eyeshadow look but i i really like this look Got to try a really great brand that I didn't normally buy from. And when I want to have an easy quick day, yeah, I'm going to pick up a liquid eyeshadow. I'm going to pick up a quick drying mat. I'm going to possibly pick up this stick foundation. <laughs> we'll see. Negatives now. Negatives. Ooh. Not to be negative, Nancy, but <laughs> the foundation, I i mean, the coverage looks okay on camera, but when I'm looking like super close, it definitely does not hide any type of textures, and it is light coverage, which I'm not a fan of. I like full coverage, full punch, hide all my imperfections. <laughs> um, the color, though, this was the darkest that we could find, so I'm actually glad that it wasn't awful. It's just, I wish the coverage was way more. So from full coverage person, this would have to, I just put in the negative because I'm not gonna grab for this. Even my everyday, I like full coverage, so. And then my <laughs> negatives <laughs> um, would be the lipsticks. So these being the high shines, they're not tacky, but they're sticky and four applications to get like the color pigmentation just right I think is way overdoing it I was really hoping that these would have like this color first application but they're very sheer if you just do one so if you want it really pigmented for three or four applications so that's a that's a bummer and then the matte lipstick for me um the red was wasn't as pigmented as I thought like it didn't really get red on my top lip. You could still see my brown peeking through, so I, and I don't do multiple applications usually with matte lipsticks, especially this one, because it's dried down before I realized that I should have done <laughs> another coat. So I didn't want it to crack or anything, but yeah, I just wasn't a fan of the lipsticks, which is a bummer, because I'm a lipstick junkie. I literally have way more lipsticks than I should. That was my negative. I would say the only negative for me would be the Illuminator palette. Not that because the palette itself or the color or the payoff itself is nasty. I think that I just wouldn't grab for this because 
the odds of me using all these shades at once are very slim, and I'm not going to mm -hmm. pick it up when I have a single that's literally the same color. I'm yeah. going to pick up the single because, you know, like, I'm not going to yeah. open this big old thing. Now, if I was traveling and I was going to be doing lots of different looks mm -hmm. during the summer, this would probably be one that I would take with me because it's all the shades that I probably would wear during mm -hmm. that time. Plus, for packing purposes, that's one big pan. But I'd be honestly afraid <laughs> because when we were in the store, yeah, we picked up the rainbow one <laughs> that's like the size of it yeah smaller slipped it fell and uh it cracked into eighty thousand pieces inside there it didn't open obviously because it was sealed but shattered it was gone it was a rainbow slush after that shattered it's just it's dead but i'd be afraid of that breaking so uh, the only other thing i felt like i could have done without in my collection is probably the mascaras just because like i didn't appreciate how the fibers were inside but that's just the one drawback to going and buying drugstore. You just can't test it, which is okay. Yeah. I, I like doing new products for uh, drugstore bingo or first impressions because I, I thought I wouldn't like doing videos like this, but I actually kind of yeah. like them. Yeah. yeah. Versus like, oh yeah, this is the palette I pick up all the time. I'm going to yeah. make this eye look for y'all. You, It's new to you, but it's not new to me. Right. This is just a lot more fun. But the mascara itself wasn't bad. Um, it's just the fibers and the combination with the mascara. Just too many steps for me to like get the payoff that I want that I can get somewhere else. That completes our drugstore bingo for Wet n Wild. We really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any products that you think we should try from this company, please let us know in the comment box down below. I'm new to Wet n Wild. Did you say you were new to it? Yeah, I'm new Yeah, too. so we're both new to Wet n Wild and this was a fun experience. Newly wet, newly wild. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll include all the prices down below. It ranged for me from like maybe like two dollars to like I think the most expensive thing was the mascara. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a dual kit, so I think that was like ten, twelve dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to hit that bell, subscribe button, and leave us a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Follow us on our social medias, sugar and spice underscore makeup on our Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, but thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye! Bye.